I am working on a biotech company along with a bunch of other people, a number of whom are here. Um, oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Let's build. Let's build. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we're 36 people right now, and we're exponentially growing, and we uh, have to know what to work on. Uh, we want to increase healthy human lifespan. Um, but the question um, first was just very theoretical, and I ignored it. Um, it was like, who's healthy human lifespan? Like, which humans? Uh, I have a hard time focusing when there's multiple conversations in the room. Okay. Um, thanks. Um, so, so the... Who's? Uh, there's like 8 billion people in the world um, and increasing. Um, uh, so it, tur it turns out that this question actually matters because we focus on strategy. We have a number of different parallel biological programs. And um, uh, where to focus, uh, like the, you have to pick an indication. You have to pick a goal and go for it. Um, and then the, the goal keeps shifting when we, when we decide on which population to use. So there are... Um, different issues that affect the healthy longevity of different populations. For instance, what, some of the main things that affect whether someone lives a healthy, long life are, say, war and poverty. Um, and, and like, access to, th those affect, like, access to health care. Um, or, uh, like, increases people's stress, which was just mentioned with respect to brain health. Um, there's pollution that has horrible effects on people, um, causes cancer and much of other problems. Despair uh, leads to, say, alcoholism, uh, suicide. Uh, these things that really significantly affect people's healthy lifespan. Apathy, smoking, poor diet, lack of exercise. Um, so what can we do about this as a company? Um, we're you know, a bunch of biotech nerds, uh, basically. So war basically it comes down to politics, and I'm terrible at politics. So I don't think I can have an effect there. Pollution, you have to clean up the environment, which means you have to do policy work, which is basically politics. Um, poverty, which is development policy implementation, which is ultimately politics. Despair is like how you organize your society, your social programs, um, which comes down to politics. Apathy, which is psychology, which is behavior modification, Maybe that's an app. So like we're, we're thinking like maybe we should be developing an app. Like if, if it comes down to like whether someone bothers to exercise or not, um, should we be working on an exercise pill uh, that replaces the physiological uh, and cellular effects of exercise? Or should we make an app that encourages people to exercise more? Um, which would be have the highest marginal effect uh, based on our work uh, as technologists, that's not an obvious answer to the question. Like, I think you could probably increase a lot of health span just by changing people's behavior. Um, but we're biotech nerds, um, and so, uh, you know, we, we would rather work on this problem from, from like a molecular and cellular sciences perspective than, than a app, tech app perspective. Um, so, uh, I think, when we think about our beneficiary population, um, in order to, for us to have marginal effect, the, the, um, wh who we want to help uh, are people whose health span isn't limited by obvious external factors. Uh, we're not going to make an app. Uh, we're gonna work on making medicines. Uh, so the goal is to start with people who already live a reasonably long, healthy life in this population. For instance, People who live, uh, people who you know, people who live in France, just as a random example plucked out of uh, you know, the uh, epidemiological literature in the middle of a particular distribution, live to about 83 years on average. Uh, so, for instance, that is a challenge for us uh, as biotechnologists um, to increase that average to 93 years. Say, hugely difficult problem, but at least it focuses us more on 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 what's needed to do that. Um, these are people um, for whom you would expect that lifestyle modifications aren't an obvious slam dunk to take an 83-year-old and for them to live to 93. But even if you have a doubt in your heart about that answer, you can just take, you can continue to raise that number to an, an, an 
expected age, like a subpopulation where the expected age of, of death is some number higher, um, and ultimately convince yourself that, okay, them changing from you know, eating uh, uh, lasagna to broccoli isn't going to add 10 years to their life. At some point, there will be an age where it is only a technological intervention that will increase their lifespan by 10 years, healthy lifespan by 10 years. Um, different of you may have a different number, um, but ultimately it's gonna come down to that. Um, the person who lives to 110 is not gonna live to 120 because they switch from lasagna to broccoli. Um, uh, so, uh, I guess, let's say we have, um, uh, already we have an incredible life extending technology. Um, it's been validated um, by many academic papers and by clinical studies. Um, and we would very much like for it to be rolled out to a wider population. Um, it's called exercise. Um, it's incredible. Like if you read the aging biology literature, the effect of, of like the cells in animals that exercise versus don't exercise uh, or in humans is like a really, really big difference. Um, only about a, a quarter of Americans, for instance, exercise any reasonable amount. You were exercising during our virtual seminars. I remember that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's free. It's here. It's a drug you can use if you're motivated. OK. Um, uh, I highly encourage you to t take advantage of it. Um, however, so that, that's like an interesting corner case for us because we're surrounded by three, these three quarters of people who don't do it. Um, is it our job to make an app to convince them to exercise? Or is, should we make a pill that simulates exercise? Um, but why should we make that pill if the other pill called exercise, one minute, perfect. Um, and then is there some Q&A? Yes. OK, perfect. Exactly what I want. Um, like, since that pill, quote unquote pill, is already available, um, should we make one that simulates it? Or should we make a therapies that address other effects? Um, and I'm going to propose other effects. But I, I really want your questions and opinions on that. Um, but that. But that brings to the question, we have 9,000 mice now in our vivarium uh, because it's really hard to get access to all kinds of unique genotypes of mice um, that are aged already because we're an aging biology company. We don't want to test our therapies in young mice. We want to test them in old mice. Um, so that's what it takes to have a robust supply. Uh, should we put running wheels in all those cages? Should we be only testing our therapies on mice that already exercise? That's the that's, that's a question. Um, so um, if we make an exercise pill and no one bothers to take it, who would bother to take it? Some people, we're, 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 let's say we make a, a life extending therapy pill um, and present it for sale. Some people will take it, some people won't. Um, are the people who don't even care, um, maybe they'd just rather smoke a pack of cigarettes, like they just don't care. Like, is that our target market? Um, we had to think about this because it affects actually some of our therapeutic target decisions, weirdly. Like, I didn't expect it to actually matter that much, but it matters. So what do you think? Who's our target market? Who, are we, who, who, who should we, as retrobiosciences, um, aim to serve? That's <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Our company is not, in my opinion, existing solely. Like, if we say it as our mission, uh, I'll take that as a question, because um, uh, it, uh, it's not existing solely to extend the health span of like one rich dude by 10 years. Um, we, we say it's extending healthy hu human lifespan by 10 years, but who? Um, it would be very easy just to pluck one person out of the US population and say, OK, we're going to extend your healthy human lifespan by 10 years. Um, but our aspirations are more global. Uh, we want billions of people to live longer, healthier lives. Um, so, um, so th no, that's I, not I the answer. People like the people that are already doing everything that they could do that can do now. OK. Um, that, I mean, th that's, there's a certain integrity to that. Like, you want to make a product that you would want to use. Um, but is it, is it like, le other opinions? The, the question is, if you came up with a pill that would extend the lifespan of those people, would it also then help the other people? 
And the reverse question is, if you came up with a pill that will help the people who are still smoking, will that help the first group? Yeah, so I think that, that's a really beautiful analysis. And I think there's an, as, there's an asymmetry there. So in some ways, by giving ourselves the hardest problem, which is coming up with a pill that helps the already healthy, motivated people with access to healthcare, et cetera, probably it would also have an effect um, on the other population. The However, it isn't only the running wheel, it's how much are you feeding? Yeah, that as well. Um, all right. We okay. What well, last question? But then we're out of time. If, if unmotivated people have money that they're willing to give you, you should market to them. Ah, uh, okay. The pure commercial goal. Um, assuming money is not an issue, which for us it isn't, um, then then who? I, I, I would argue that money is always an issue if you want to if you want to cure the issue truly. You mentioned motivation, though. So there's a base level of people who are at least motivated enough to acquire the therapeutic and take it. That's going to be the cap on global impact, right? And so that's a problem you'll have to address. How do you get people to do it's, this? It's a, there's a bit of a, sorry, just kick me off of here when this is ready. There's a bit of a chicken egg issue with that, uh, which is that um, initially a lot of people won't be motivated to take it, but then after a few years when other people who weren't motivated see the motivated people getting healthier um, and um, younger or staying younger, um, it'll probably spread a bit. Like first only some people took statins and now a lot more people take statins because they actually presumably like increase health span. Um, I think there's only one obvious answer and that's everyone. Everyone, yeah, well. <clears throat> I mean, um, if you're able to target the people who uh, are, are with pre-diabetes, then you get like a huge chunk of the population. So anything that, yeah, if you're if the idea is to target uh, you know, some sort of like you know exercise in the medic almost, that'll that'll get you there. That's going to get you everywhere. Okay, we're going to leave it at this. Thank you, Joe. Before you go, what is the question that you want others to solve during this workshop? For example, in a project formation time. A question. A question that I want others yeah. to solve. Based on your talk, like, what do you think like, would be a useful project to make progress on this problem? Um, should, should we 100% focus on producing therapies that extend the health span of already healthy, motivated people? Okay. Thank you very much, Joe. Wonderful.